In this lesson, we will continue to solve examples of factorization and therefore improve our ability to do some basic algebraic manipulations. These are two uh, examples with very similar manipulations, so let's club them together and handle them. The problem is to factorize these two expressions and uh, here uh, a clever addition of one term which is completing the square is going to help as follows now since you have added something you have to subtract the same number which is 4x square and now you see that this expression is completing the square so it's a perfect square but this term also turns out to be a perfect square and therefore you can write this as x square plus 2 whole square minus 4x square and this is of course easily factorizable to two terms x square plus 2 plus 2x multiplied by x square plus 2 minus 2x so we have managed to factorize this expression by adding in a term to complete the square and subtracting the term which also turns out to be a perfect square and something similar will work out here so I have 1 plus so make this 2x raised to 4 plus x raised to 8 so this is again adding an additional term I'm sorry one small one term to make it a perfect square since you have added one x raised to 4 extra you subtract the one x raised to 4 and once again you see this is the perfect square this is the perfect square so we can write this as x raised to 4 plus 1 whole square minus x raised to 4 and this is of course can be factorized into two terms x4 minus plus 1 plus x square multiplied by x raised to 4 plus 1 minus x square so the trick was very similar now let's look at another example once again you're supposed to factorize this particular polynomial and uh, this particular example I would like you to definitely have a go at it before you see the way I have approached it and um, it's worthwhile it's indeed um, let me just write down the answer here and one wonders how one would have been able to get to such an answer so just write down the answer these are the two factors of this polynomial very impressive looking factors and uh, this is the answer to this problem how would one get to this now like I said please make sure that you give it a good thought but however as always it doesn't seem that difficult once you realize or have a little bit of luck and the strategy here is the way I understand it is you have to guess the roots of this polynomial now if you can get the roots obviously or some roots then you can immediately get some factor and that is definitely a breakthrough in the problem now typically one guesses numbers or integers when one is asked to guess by brute force the roots of the polynomial now in this particular example it turns out that your guess has to be a complex number so that's the only confusing thing about this problem so a complex number, a complex root will be the root of this equation and in this case 
it turns out that a very popular complex number is the cube root of unity so omega which is equal to the cube root of unity so which is the root of omega is a root of the x cube equal to 1 which by the way is the same thing as the roots of the polynomial x cube minus 1 equal to 0 which can be factorized as x minus 1 to 1 plus x plus x square so the complex roots of this quadratic equation are represented as the two complex roots are actually turns out they turn out to be the square of each other so they are represented as omega and omega square and since omega satisfies this equation we have a very uh, popular form uh, result identity of the cube root of unity that is 1 plus omega plus omega square is equal to 0 which is simply substituting omega into the quadratic equation which it satisfies so omega is the cube root of unity and it satisfies this equation now it turns out that omega so let's call this as a polynomial of a it turns out as you can see that it turns out that f of omega is actually going to be equal to 0 so once you realize that and similarly f of omega square will also be 0 which means that omega and omega square the complex numbers satisfy this equation and if we can prove these two what does that mean it just means that okay I just try to clean up the board a bit it simply means that if omega and omega square satisfy this equation it simply okay I just write it here it simply means that 1 plus a plus a square is a factor of this polynomial factor of f of a now if that is you've gotten hold of one factor then this difficult factor is simply f of a divided by 1 plus a plus a square which is simply division so we are well versed in division and that way we can get both the factors so all that remains now is to verify that omega and omega square are definitely roots of this equation so let me just try to write down why would f omega be equal to 0 so let's substitute omega into the polynomial so f omega is equal to 1 plus omega raised to 5 plus omega raised to 10 which is the same as 1 plus omega square plus omega and this is of course 0 as it's a standard identity and uh, similarly one can easily prove that f omega square is equal to 0 okay let me just do it it just takes a minute 1 plus omega raised to 10 plus omega raised to 20 and this is nothing but 1 plus omega plus omega square and uh, that is again equal to 0 right so this is the explanation for the factorization of this polynomial now let me just do one more before I end this lesson and uh, this example is related to a concept that we studied in the last lesson so this will be a quick revision of a concept which you have learned recently once again let me write down the answer first it's a very impressive looking answer and then we'll try to see how one would reason out that these are the factors of this particular problem okay so it turns out that a minus b 
into b minus c into c minus a into a square plus b square plus c square plus a b plus b c plus c a is the answer to this problem right so first let me justify how it's very easy to realize that this is a factor of this polynomial of three variables well you could do the same factor strategy you could just substitute a equal to b and see that it goes to zero but another way is to realize that this is actually equal to minus of f b a c and this implies that the polynomial is anti-symmetric so as we discussed in the previous lesson we already got three factors now the left hand side is of degree 5 so it is quite easy to guess that the other polynomial will be of degree 2 in fact it is going to be symmetric so degree 2 and symmetric now you could proceed as in one of the previous problems so the fact that these coefficients a b c will have one as their coefficient is very easy and if you're not sure about the coefficient of a b and b c and c a then you could just write it as an undetermined coefficient now you definitely know that um, it's going to be uh, symmetric so therefore you can expect all these coefficients to be same so c1 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 and then using one of the standard strategies which is to just plug in some numbers plug in values of a b c to find out the values of the coefficient now since it is going to be symmetric it's very easy to find out c1 and in this particular example it turns out that these coefficients are also going to be one and that is how you pin down the factors of this particular polynomial so we'll end this lesson uh, and we will look at a few more examples in more lessons on factorization and identities. Thank you.